We've finished making all the individual parts of our front bonnet section and radiator shroud. The next thing we have to do is fit them to the car. The first step in the process is we'll be using our side panels. We need to make sure our firewall is square and correct to the chassis. Also, the inner guard, this horizontal face has to be dead flat. If there's any misalignment or it's out of square, that will affect every other piece that will be attaching to the firewall. With your firewall, if it's out of alignment or it's out of square, refer back to your mounting point on the steering column. We may need to shim or pack, etc., because there's a couple of things that this will affect. Number one, our front end panels, bonnet, etc. Number two will be the doors, the fit and the alignment as to how well they close. So our bottom section here, using a spring hammer, what I'll do is come in from the front, hold this flat, and then from the back here, just with a good heavy hammer, working this until it's reasonably flat or you've got a tiny little gap between the chassis and the inner guard. The first thing we're gonna do is put the radiator shroud on. We've got some M6 by 15 button headed bolts that will go into the chassis. We're gonna do those just finger tight so that you've got movement left or right, backwards and forwards. Also the top can cant in and out. So once we've got this finger tight, we can then position our side panels and just using undersized wood screws, we'll apply that in first. We'll set everything up nice and square, both left and right. Then we can continue on by trial fitting the top of the bonnet. I'm gonna start here with just positioning the side panel, flush up against the square firewall, using a small wood screw, just loosely position it, not tight at all. That way we can make some adjustment if required. You can see here at the front also, we can pull our radiator shroud into position as well. We've got the bottom bolts on the radiator shroud finger tight. We now need to make sure that we've got the left and the right set up. Get yourself a two millimeter gap between the side panel and the radiator shroud. Also, push this down, vice grip both sides, same at the top so that everything is flush and level. Then we can tighten these bottom bolts up tech screw both left and right. We've got this set up now, it's flush and parallel. We can leave our bottom two vice grips in place, tech screw in the top, release these vice grips, then we can start to move on to the piano hinge and the upper bonnet sections. We're up to mounting the hinge now, so we need a center line. Half of the width of our firewall, I've previously marked this center line. Then we can take part number 123, which I've put on the end of the scriber, sit it in place on the bulkhead, push against our center line. We then drill a five mil drill hole all the way through behind the dash. Using a drift, we'll put our tube support into the firewall and make sure it finishes flush. We're up to fitting the hinge now and also our front support that we previously made. So positioning this in place, sliding the rod all the way through the firewall we can then use our M4 countersunk fasteners, part number 115, 117, and 118. Don't do it up tight yet, just finger tight. Allow a little bit of movement for when we fit the bonnet. I've got the bonnet hinge just loosely fitted in place with the bolts. That will allow us to fit up the bonnet. But to do that, I've referred to drawing 17, part number 128. We're using a magnetic strip, 13 mil wide, three mil thick. You could use Velcro, hook and loop Velcro. What we'll do is cut a length of magnetic strip from one end to the other, put it on there whilst we're setting up to replicate the height, but when it's all painted and finished, we'll be putting some adhesive and we'll be bonding it to the top surface. We'll use a magnetic strip so that the bonnet won't keep flying open. I've got the magnetic strip on the bonnet. Now positioning the bonnet you'll get an overlay on the center line of the hinge. So the other thing that we've got to do is make sure the outside or the vertical face of the bonnet is level with the side panel. I'll be putting some vice grips on the inside plans just to lock this in place. The reason being 
is now we've moved the bonnet up, the bend radius just has to be adjusted a little bit, so some manipulation. With that, we can then mark our guillotine cut line as to where the bonnet is overlapping the centre of the hinge. When clamping your vice grip, don't put too much pressure on it, otherwise you'll damage the face of the steel and then you'll have to repair it later on. What you want is ideally just a quick clamping pressure. You can get up to one tonne of pressure on these jaws. How I go about resolving this issue of fitment is I start at the bottom. You can see here when I push it down, we're getting movement on this vice grip. That's telling me that that horizontal fold just needs a little bit of manipulation. So we get it fitting correctly from the bottom, work our way up to the next line, then work your way through the bend radius to then get it fitting like that. I've made some adjustments to the bonnet. We've got it fitting really well now. You can see through the center here, we've got a bit of overhang of the bonnet on top of the hinge. With our previously marked center line, I'm going to measure in five millimeters, mark that on the radiator shroud, measure in five millimeters and mark the firewall, then transfer those five millimeter marks to the sheet metal, which will guillotine. That will then allow the bonnet to sit flush on top of the face of the hinge that will fasten or weld together later. Therefore, that hinge can then move freely with the bonnet. On the front, just measuring the section we're going to be trimming off here, that's about eight millimeters. The back is approximately five to six millimeters. So you can notice that we've got more material on the front. That's because the radius on the front is a lot tighter than the back. So the next thing I'm going to do is transfer that mark to the back side of the rear and the front. Then we'll be drawing a straight line and that will be our guillotine cut line. To guillotine this edge, we can do it a few different ways. Bench mounted hand shears will give you a nice straight cut. Throatless shears. You could use tin snips, but you've got to be really accurate. You could use power tools, but I would put a piece of angle line up against it and using a thin one mil cutoff disc. Make sure that that edge has no distortion on it because later on it's going to be welded or fastened to the hinge. If you're still a little bit out as far as your fit and alignment and you just need to chase half a one millimeter, don't try and do it on a guillotine because you'll probably roll the edge. Therefore, what you should do is set up some flat bar or angle line and just use an engineer's file to take half to one mil off. That's the left half of the bonnet done. You can see here we've got a nice parallel fit with a little gap to the hinge. So now we repeat the same process on the right hand side. Then we can actually fasten or weld the hinge and the bonnet together. We're ready to fasten the hinge and the bonnets together now. There's three different ways that we can do it. Firstly, you can pop rivet it. Secondly, we can spot weld it. Or thirdly, we can MIG plug weld it. The first method we'll demonstrate is pop riveting. With pop riveting, apply some pressure down on the bonnet so it's hard up against the hinge. Then we mark the edge of the hinge underneath and we'll also mark the center where we're gonna be drilling the holes for the pop rivets. So we'll go over to the welding table and we'll do that one first. We've got the bonnet and hinge, previously marked it. So we'll be doing a center punch on each hole, four mil drill going through then we'll be setting it up and pop riveting. That's our first half pop riveted. Everything's secured, nice and tight. Hinge is functioning, so we could move on and do the other half. Second method we're gonna demonstrate is MIG plug welding. To do that, we're gonna to have to clean some paint off first. Both sides of the hinge have to be clean, also, the back underside of the bonnet must be cleaned. We'll then apply weld through primer here and this face of the hinge. We can then reset our bonnet, mark when we're in position with the scriber, so that way we get the inside face of the hinge all the way front to back, and then we can also scribe the whole locations. So once we pull it off onto the welding table, we can then reset it in the same position. I've sanded both sides of the hinge. What I'll do now is mask this face up, apply some weld through primer. Also, we'll be applying weld through primer to the inside face 
of the bonnet. The weld through primer is dry now, so the next thing we need to do is set it back up on the car again. But just to show you, when we've got this set up, clamped and aligned, we then get our scriber, mark the top, the bottom, the vertical face, also the plug welds. We can then remove it from the car using some vice grips. We'll then realign everything, vice grip each end, and we can plug weld. We've marked this on the car removed it from the car, we've now set it back up on the weld bench. We can then reposition as per our witness marks, vice grip, and then plug weld. We're ready to plug weld now. The machine settings that we're using is 17.5 volts, 7 meters per minute on the wire feed, 14 liters per minute on the gas flow, and 0.8 wire. So before we do that, I've done a couple of sample welds. Make sure you can use a little bit of leftover hinge. It's the same plug welding procedure that we previously did welding the inner and the outer guards together. That's our sample piece done where we've pop riveted and we've also MIG plug welded. The other method is you could use fasteners, little dome head M4 stainless steel with nylock nuts. You can see here we've got a full range of movements which is perfect. So. The third method we'll demonstrate is spot welding. The process of spot welding relies on resistance. So we get a current running through the machine. The resistance is the two layers of sheet metal. With pressure and resistance, the electricity creates a little weld nugget. You then hold pressure on the jaws for another second or two until the metal solidifies. You then release and you've fused two pieces together. This machine itself is 240 volt, 15 amp. So we've got some jaws in here that will measure 125 millimeters that will be coming in through the radiator shroud to then spot weld the first few spot welds together. For the process of spot welding, the preparation weld through primer is identical to plug welding. On plug welding, we use these holes to fill it up. However, for spot welding, we don't. We need metal to metal contact. So we'll be doing this process on the car. The reason is we get perfect fit and alignment. So you get the right exact position and location. We'll also be using straps to hold it down with pressure. We'll be coming in from the front with the spot welder and we'll be doing the first few spot welds. For the process of spot welding our bonnet, we've clamped the inside flange so it's flush on the outside with the side panel. The next thing we have to do is mark exactly where we're going to be putting the spot welds. We do that just simply using a texture. We measure in five millimeters, and remember, we've got to make sure that we're not going to be locating our spot welds over or with the holes. So we'll be spot welding adjacent to the holes where it's metal to metal contact. We've now got the left and the right hand side of the bonnet in position and marked out for our spot welds. The next thing we need to do is apply a little bit of force or load on the bonnet to get it nice and snug tight up against the hinge. We're going to do that by simply using straps around the chassis over the top of the front of the bonnet, doing the same across the rear. Make sure you get some good force down. That way we can then start doing our spot welds. Just before we get started spot welding, we'll do a quick safety overview. The first thing is with a spot weld, you can get some splashing or sparks. So we'll be using a clear face shield. Secondly, also gloves. Thirdly, because electric current passes through these arms and they're copper, they conduct electricity, make sure that you don't earth or contact anything with the arms underneath. For example, our vice grips in here, make sure you've got plenty of clearance. With a spot weld, there's three processes involved. Number one is to squeeze where you join the pieces together under pressure. Number two is the weld itself where the resistance of the electricity builds up heat to the point where it actually fuses the metal together. Thirdly, and most important, is the hold time. If you release it too quickly, the weld will pull apart. You must wait until it's solidified, at least a couple of seconds. Once you've released it, you may hear a crack at some point a few seconds later, that means it hasn't been welded properly. You can see with this spot welder, 
our throat depth is approximately 125 mil from the center of contact to there. You can buy optional extra longer arms with different contact heads. So this will get our first three spot welds done. Then we'll pull the bonnet off and we'll complete the rest of the spot welds. I've done the first three spot welds on the left and the right. So I've run out of length with the spot welder. So therefore we've released the bonnet from the car, set it up on this welding table, offset it so that then I can get in further with the arms. I can do another two spot welds on each side. Then what we'll do is release, turn the bonnet around and come in from the back side. We've just finished spot welding the bonnet. So you can see here that this is quite neat, inside and outside. A little bit of sanding just to dress those spot welds. So that's three different methods that we've demonstrated. Plug welding, pop riveting, and the spot welding. So now we can fit this back onto the car, make our final adjustments, then we can go on with the front balance panel. We've refitted the bonnet, adjusted it, and tightened everything, as we would when it's painted on final fit. So, We've got a little bit of spring back here. That's as a result of our straps where it's under tension. We spot welded and we got a little bit of movement. That will happen to any of the methods that we've demonstrated. So therefore, to rectify that, we'll be spring hammering the front face and the back face just to get it to relieve and sit nice and flush and then hold up against our magnetic strip. You can really see here where it's actually sitting up. Like that's nice and flush now. This side that we've done previously, that's sitting really well. So what you're gonna see is it will literally start to sit down just a few millimeters. There we go, that's starting to sit nice and flush now and you can see here there's, there's no gap. So that's the front, we now need to do the back. The advantage with the spring hammer is we're not leaving any damage, dents, etc. So we've got nothing to repair or fix later. And now you can see there's no more spring back. That's it for this episode. Hopefully your bonnet, side panels and the radiator shroud are all lining up and sitting flush. Join us next time where we'll be making the valance that sits over the front of the chassis.